Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show with your host, Phil Tarrant. G'day, how are you going? Welcome to the podcast. Uh, we're now sort of firmly into this silly season, in inverted commas, if that's what you want to call it. I know everyone's really busy right now. I was running around doing different things in preparation for Christmas and the summer. And you'll notice a bit of a theme. I've been chatting about this a little bit, and I think it's a great time to assess where you are and what you're doing and how you're going about doing things uh, this period where you might be able to take some time off work and uh, spend time with family and also get some headspace to start thinking about stuff. So we're going to keep at it over this period and uh, goal setting is a big part of it. And I'm going to steal this term from Simon Presley, my guest today, the goal setting season. You know, it's a good time to talk about investment and getting your mindset right and the sort of attitude and behaviours that you need to be thinking about to be successful doing this. He's backed by popular demand. You've been asking for more of Simon, so we got him in. Head of Research Propertyology. How are you going, Simon? You well? Really well. I love these chats. I can never talk too much about property. I know. You do love it, don't you? Absolutely. Just one thing before we move on to stuff today, um, just before we come in, we're having a big chat around some potential changes around property legislation up in Brisbane. Huge changes, which might shape the way in which you choose to approach all your attitudes towards investing in Brisbane. So... It's a big deal. I might get you to write something for us on smartpropertyinvestment.com. Yeah, so go and check this out. If you're not aware of what's going up in Brisbane, get informed. Um, good and bad. It depends how you want to uh, look at it. But um, go and check it out, smartpropertyinvestment.com.au, potential changes to property legislation up there that you need to be aware of. So goal setting. Do you take time off over Christmas, New Year's? Um, I uh, have about three weeks off where I'm not in the office. Okay. Uh, as you would know, as a business owner, I don't think your mind is never – Totally off, and mm. I must admit that I'm not real good at that, turning mm. the mind off. I don't know what it is, but whenever I relax, I tend to find that the mind then gets in overdrive and goes, hey, what are you doing? you got to get busy, and yeah. all these ideas start flushing in. <laughs> oh, I'm the same. And Did you go away over Christmas or you stay local? No, we um, got a place up at Sunshine Beach. Love it up there on the Sunshine Coast. Just really, I love just chilling out near the water. Afternoons come in and a glass of red wine comes out, and it's just a Beautiful way to wind down. It is good. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to some time off myself a couple of weeks if I can manage, but uh, you never really get the chance when you're running business. As a property investor, I guess you are a business owner as well, aren't you? Absolutely. Yep. So you should be using that time to be thinking about what you should be doing for the year ahead. And I think the challenge of the crazy world that we live in today, everyone's busy all of the time. A lot of people don't really get a chance to reflect and analyse. And when they do, often they put themselves in a state of anxiety because they don't think very often. Uh, when they start thinking, they get worried about it. So what I wanted to do today, Simon, and uh, you've done some homework for me in preparation for the podcast where I've, I've asked you to go away and think about what some of the the great motivators, the great smart people through the generations have said, but also some of the people that you might not know about. And you've put together a list of 10 sage sayings for me, which I think is going to um, give us a really good way to navigate this discussion over the next sort of 25 minutes or so, learning from the best, but really giving our interpretation of what these greats are talking about. That should be a bit of fun as well. Yes, but a big apology first. Um, when you say great, a couple of these sayings are mine. I definitely don't put myself in the great. Well, I was going to call you out on that, so uh, <laughs> we'll get to that. But I think we should kick off, and anyone who has been in invested in anything at any given time will be familiar with the great Warren Buffett, one of the world's, if not the world's, greatest investors of all time. One of Warren Buffett's quotes is, the time to be fearful is when everyone else is greedy. The time to be greedy is when everyone else is fearful. Most people will be familiar with this quote, but what it really talks to Simon is around mindset and counter-cyclical decision-making and things are never as good or as bad as what the consensus say. That's pretty much what he's getting to with this, isn't it? Yeah, and I think unless you're really conscious of it, investors in all asset classes, not just property, they tend to get consumed by whatever the consensus is doing you know, whatever's being reported in the mainstream media, what they hear said on TV, what the politicians, the economists are saying, what people are talking about, the barbecue discussion, that's all the consensus. And I guess, again, if you're not conscious of it, what that does to investors, is it makes you feel confident that if you do that, you're following the herd. But if the herd was so often right, have a think about it, that the world would be full of all these financially independent people mm. But it's actually not. It's actually the other way around. Most people, when they get to that retirement age, are not financially independent. So if you do the same thing, you know, probably expect the same outcome. So what I take out of Warren Buffett saying here is always be mindful of what the consensus is saying. And often what Warren Buffett does as the world's most successful investor is often the opposite to what the masses are doing. So let's give you some context to this market right now. And I spoke about Brisbane. You've got to give us some more info about how that's changing. But 
you know, all the discussions at the moment. Brizzy's sort of pretty much business as usual for Brisbane outside of these potential changes. Same with Adelaide. Perth hasn't really changed much in its dynamics. So a lot of the, the headspace everyone's talking about right now is the Sydney and the Melbourne markets. And if we think about just as an example, Sydney, a lot of people out there trying to buy properties right now, not a lot of properties on the market. So, yeah. you know, it is definitely a seller's market and you've got investors potentially who are out there trying to jag themselves so they might be overpaying. So we're in one of these cycles of greed right now is is a seller's market where people start getting greedy because they want, they want, they want and therefore might make the wrong decisions. Yeah, I think what's happening with Sydney and uh, pretty much the same extent Melbourne, the growth, and it is happening, you know, prices are, are rising at a pretty rapid rate over the last few months. But it's important that investors understand what fundamentals mean and what stimulus means and at the moment, Sydney and Melbourne's fundamentals aren't terrible, but they're not anywhere near the best fundamentals that an investor can pick in Australia. And the growth we're seeing is from the stimulus, which is what the Reserve Bank want when they passed three rate cuts within a five-month period of time. So I think there's a lot of people that are in a bit of a frenzy on this assumption that the boom that Sydney started in late 2012 and ended you know, four and a bit years later, they think, oh, it's another one going, I've got to get in. And that mm. is greed, as you correctly said, Phil. But the fundamentals that were behind Sydney's earlier boom are nothing like what they are now. So people need to be really careful, I think, about that. Reserve Bank are not going to continue to drop interest rates you know, forever and a day. Mm. When that stops, what you are left with is the fundamentals. What do the fundamentals look like? Just go back to the beginning of 2019 before all this stimulus started and just ask yourself, what were the fundamentals behind Sydney and Melbourne? How were those markets performing because of that? Because they haven't changed. They're still the same now in late 2019 as what they were in early 2019. Okay, good point. So uh, channel the Warren Buffett when you're making these decisions is the recommendation. All right, sage saying number two from John F. Kennedy. And uh, I was only over in Dallas a little bit earlier this year and I stood at the window where uh, the gentleman Lee Harvey – Oswald yeah. shot JFK. So uh, I had a look and uh, and had a, saw how all that happened. He was one of the great presidents. He wasn't in the seat for very long, but um, he was a very popular president. I think uh, his legacy continues today. And uh, one of his quotes is, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And I guess, Simon, this is sort of channeling, you know, an attitude or a positive attitude or, or contribution. Don't be sort of, you know, the victim mm. uh, with most things. And, um, you know, get off the sidelines and actually into the game. And that's what Kennedy was talking about with these things. Absolutely. Look, I love that saying. And I guess one thing that I've always admired about America is they're very patriotic. You know, the American residents really, really do love their country. And mm. I think that's where John F. Kennedy was coming from with that saying. But in this modern world, we seem to be, I don't know whether, whether there's more people in this demographic or whether they just have a louder voice, but we just seem to be having an increasing amount of noise about poor me, I want something, what is someone going to do, you need to fix this for me. Whether it's Australia, America or the world at large, the world never gets better if you've got a lot of people that have that attitude. The world gets better when people do. Mm. We've all got a brain, we've all got two arms, we've all got two legs. So it's what you do and don't, and not what you sit back and what you expect. So how we can use this in investment terms is get off the sidelines, make a plan for yourself, set some goals Stretch yourself and have a crack because mm. if you forever sit around waiting for someone to do it for you, it won't happen. It's about contribution when it comes to property investing. I'm sort of like most investors at times are weighing on this. So maybe it should be what your country asks, not what your property portfolio can do for you, but what you can do for your property portfolio and that's taking action, right? Anyway, this next sage saying, it's not from the Oracle of Omaha. Maybe it's from <laughs> a, a bright bloke from Brisbane, Simon Presley, the one and only. Instead of buying shares in a company, astute investment in property is akin to buying shares in a community. What do you mean by this? What I mean by that, look, we've been we've had these discussions many times and every single time we end up talking about economics for part or and sometimes lots of these discussions because I, as a full-time student of Australian real estate, I have learnt that what will always have the biggest influence on any property market is its local economy. A strong national economy makes all property markets healthy and then how the individual local economy performs will determine whether that performs below or above the national average, I suppose. But it's the economic stuff that's the most important thing. And I've always felt that share investors are much, much smarter than property investors. And that's largely not because they're born with any more intelligence. It's because there is nothing to see and touch 
with shares. People understand that before they invest in shares. So they mm. will spend more time, I feel, they'll spend more time trying to understand what does influence share markets, whereas the property investor gets consumed by neighbourhood features and benefits and they think because they, they know the city as a neighbourhood that they, they feel comfortable with the property market. So if you have the same process investing in property as what a share investor does in the stock market, you will significantly increase the chances of having a really good performance. I guess shares forces you to take a less emotional approach to it because you can't see it, look at it, hold it, live in it. You might invest in, I'll just make something up, you might invest in Commonwealth Bank shares Mm. but don't actually bank with them because they're two completely different objectives, aren't they? You might get along with a teller at the ANZ branch around the corner or you might have been there all your life or whatever. But when it comes to investing, that really doesn't matter. But yet a property investor will think nothing about, I must invest in this city because I live here. Mm. It's a completely different objective, different decision-making process. So our next stage saying is one of the greats of sport, of the sport of basketball. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. We'll go into that. Just go to a quick break. Welcome back, everyone. Here is Simon Presley, Head of Research, Propertyology. We're looking at the 10 sage sayings that you need to be channeling, I guess, as you uh, reflect and recharge over the summer period. Number four, the great Michael Jordan. He was big when I was growing up as a kid, and uh, he's still revered as one of the, the great sort of basketball talents of many, many generations. And Michael Jordan said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games 26 times. I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. And uh, I think most people will find some way to connect with that particular saying. And to me, it sort of talks about sort of, you know, attitude and, you know, this whole idea of perfection doesn't exist and you've got to keep persevering and you've got to get, you've got to embrace the disappointments in order to be a successful investor. That's how I'd read it. Absolutely. Success doesn't happen by accident, whether it's Michael Jordan in basketball, whether it's someone in business, whether it's an investor. Every experience is a learning opportunity and the more experiences you have, the more you will learn. The unfortunate reality is that sometimes you'll make a decision that you'll look back on in hindsight and go, that didn't unfold the way that I wanted to. I have lots of discussions you know, on a daily basis talking to you know, a potential client about investing and sometimes they're beating themselves up you know, almost apologising or embarrassed that I made this decision. You don't have a crystal ball. It doesn't exist. And as Michael Jordan, I think, saying, one of the things he's saying there is there's no such thing as perfection. Mm. But what you can do is have a go. And when it doesn't unfold the way you want, you will learn more from that if you reflect on that initial decision and try to understand why didn't it go the way you wanted to. You will learn more than that than what anything you can probably read online on a blog. And this is all about getting, just being in a bad game, getting in the game, taking action. And, uh, you know, I connected saying this would be around um, imperfect action is better than perfect inaction. Yeah, having is a go. Just saying, having a go. You're yeah. better off doing something. At least yeah. you're doing something, you've got control over it. Yeah. So, As a property investor, there are all sorts of locations over Australia that, you know, in years gone by I thought would have done a good thing and they didn't mm. or the other way around you gave – little attention to because you just couldn't see any potential, but you probably hadn't spent the time to really dig deep into learn about that market. And then years later, it's done well. And that's the sort of thing that Michael Jordan is saying there. So learn from the past. Don't bash yourself up. Perfection does not exist. And for you and where you sort of had these disappointments or where you could have done it better in the past, is that tangibly change the way you've invested or the locations yeah, that you yeah, focus on? Yeah, it is. On. But the key to it is reflection because mm. no one sets out to make any decision in life to be disappointed. It's not until later down the track that you you then realise that disappointment. And when you're in that, you know, call it the oh shit moment, mm. that is the opportunity when you've got that emotion that you don't like, sadness, fear, frustration, whatever it is, what I have taught myself to do is to take myself back to when I made that decision, what was the information I relied on most and what has actually happened The learning in that is the things that I thought was really valuable sometimes has proved not to be so valuable, but then understanding why did a market do really well and what did I miss there, without doing that, we would never have discovered Hobart. Mm. We would never have discovered Orange or Ballarat or Launceston. So there there are some failures beforehand and the learnings from those failures that then set you up to do what Michael Jordan's done, to actually have the shot that wins the game. And people always remember the shots that win the game, not the ones that they didn't. Absolutely. All right, back to Warren Buffett. Sage saying number five, 
Warren says, successful investing takes time, discipline, and patience. No matter how great the talent or effort, some things just take time. You can't produce a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. <laughs> So playing the odds probably ain't a great strategy, right, is what he's getting at there, is it? And yeah. patience, I think. Yeah. There's a lot of investors that, you know, want to buy today and want to expect it to boom in the first 12 months. And yeah. and whilst, you know, history shows that there are situations when that has happened, the odds of that happening are really, really low. Mm. They really are. So, you know, you are better being in a market too early and, you know, putting your money in a market because it does have solid fundamentals. No one can tell you when it will start to grow. But you can learn what are the fundamentals and look for those. It might start growing within a few months of you investing. It might take a couple of years, but Mm. you're better doing that than following the herd and buying into a market that's been growing strong for a couple of years. Patience will pay off in the end. I guess that sort of connects in with uh, our sage saying number six here. Again, Simon Presley from Propertyology. You can't invest today expecting last year's results. Focus on trying to join the dots, which will shape the results of future years. So this is not following the herd, this is following the future. Yes, and I think sometimes with this, in writing that sentence, I was thinking of the investor who focuses a lot on changes in median house prices. So they look for a market, they think they're doing their research and they look for a market that might have uh, shown some really strong numbers for the last six or 12 months and that's to them their research. But you can't invest in what happened six months ago or a year ago. You're Mm. investing in what happens in future years and the median value is probably not going to be greatly – changing median value is not going to be greatly helpful there. Okay. Because it's gone. It's gone. Number seven. And uh, everyone will know who this person is. They probably hold one of his devices in their pocket or in their hand, but we'll get into it when we're back from this break. Back in a moment. G'day, everyone. Now I'm back with Simon Presley, Head of Research, uh, Propertyology. Number seven of Sage Sayings. And we're sort of into the, the final four here, and there's some big names within this list Steve Jobs, and he was a polarizing yeah. leader as well, right? And uh, I think part of this to take is that uh, leaders come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. But the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius because the ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones that do. I find those words beautiful. Mm. I don't know about you, but I really do. And uh, especially the misfits bit. The world's full of all sorts of different It always has been full of misfits. Misfits are the people who, when you look back in the future, they're not really seen as misfits. They're seen as game changers or challenges. But at the point in time when they were doing they were misfits, right? They're they're often criticised because they're different. Mm. But if the world was full of the same people, the world would never change, would never progress. So that's not a – what can we take about that in investing? I guess bring it back to something we said earlier about following the consensus or mm. or assuming a lot of myths. The property world's full of a lot of myths. If all these myths were supported, because everyone seems to be preaching all the time, if they were supported by evidence, the world would be full of all these successful property investors. But the reality is a very small percentage of the Australian population are that way. So there is something in – the misfits for property investment. When you look at misfits in property investment, does the thing exist because, you know, is there some new crazy way to do property that no one's thought about yet, which is really going to create the next generation, next cadre of financially independent property investors or don't shy or sway too far away from the basics because there's a lot of people who try and be misfits in property and they they end up blowing all their dough. How do you read that? Yeah, well, that was a really big statement of Steve Jobs. It's like about six lines or something. But the word misfit is what grabbed me. Yeah. I'm I'm sure he's talking about the iPhone, right, which has changed the world, right? Yes, absolutely. Back then everyone's going, oh, well, no, I've got a Um, Nokia, whatever. What he's saying is think differently. Mm. And by him thinking differently and being passionate about something, in his case it was technology, he's changed the world. The way that people live these days with that iPhone in our hand and how we communicate, it's no longer a phone in our hand. It's a... Mm does all this sort of stuff. But I will admit there are times I feel like a misfit. There's a lot of things that we do as a property investor that others would say is so not conventional. Mm. Not many people ever have many complimentary things to say about non-capital city locations, but unapologetically I always say- You are on the payroll of regional Australia, mate. You know, Imagine your most popular man or (laughs) some of these great towns. Great sort of regional cities like your Armadales, et cetera. I imagine you're pretty well liked. Just as objective about eight capital cities as Mm. I have about all the non-capital cities. But to a lot of people, you mention a non-capital city and people think you're one of the crazy ones. Mm. 
Do you think that will change or is it always going to be the way it is? Oh, like 65% of Australians live in a capital city, so, you know, they don't know what they don't know, I yeah. suppose. But as an investor, remove the blinkers. Don't be that share investor that thinks you have to buy ANZ shares because you work for ANZ Bank. Actually, I was watching a Struggle Street. Have you ever seen this on SBS or no. whatever? It's about people doing it tough in regional Australia. Right. And, uh, Yes, some people do it real tough. Some people do it tough and some capital. The, yeah, there is, but the um, can't remember what they said. Some ridiculous two million people in Australia live below the poverty line, which yep. is pretty significant, right? And this is not a regional or, or a non-regional thing, but what I'm getting at, the people's view of regional Australia might be what you see on a show like that, which is a tiny the little town with stuff, a with yeah. hundred people living in it, right? Yeah. You know, when you look at big regional centres like Dubbo or Bendigo or Geelong, you know, Sunshine Ge- Geelong, Coast, Gold Coast, these are big regional centres. Yeah. They're very, very big. Yeah. You know. Very big. So um, if you are not familiar with regional Australia, my challenge to you over this period over the summer where you've got some time to reset and recharge, do a couple of day trips. Go and check out some of these towns and get a feel for it, for how the other half of Australia lives that doesn't live within capital cities. And, um, you know, if you go and do that and you've never done it, it might just change your perception or mindsets towards what goes on outside of our capitals. Sage saying number eight, uh, back to Michael Jordan again. Are you a basketball fan? No, I'm not at all. He's no? got some great sayings. This is just stuff he come off the um, top of his head when he was in an interview or is sort of this sculptured stuff from Michael Jordan? Um, I know he's written a book and stuff. But some of these just, I don't know, you're, you're just catching just, up just on there. your news, scrolling through your iPhone and someone's just posted an inspirational saying and yeah. Yeah, over the years I've sort of pulled just something apart. Them up. Okay. So the great basketball, Michael Jordan, he says, if you're trying to achieve, there will be roadblocks. I've had them. Everybody has had them. But obstacles don't have to stop you. If you run into a wall... Don't turn around and give up. Figure out how to climb it, go through it, or work around it. This is really back to attitude, isn't it? Yeah. And again, it's a common theme amongst all successful people from all walks of life, isn't it? They've got a can-do attitude. They've got a resilience about them. They get just as many challenges thrown at them, but they get up and they dust themselves off and they go again and again and again. Life's full of disappointments and Mm. you will have them – as an investor, whether it's how a market performs in a couple of years, whether it's a piece of legislation that'll pop up, whether it's a bank not approving your loan, you will have disappointments. Be a lateral thinker and come up with ways to manoeuvre around it. Sometimes you've got to step sideways before you can go forward. That's a good point. And, you know, this, this term resilience is bandied around a lot. And uh, if you are resilient, it just doesn't happen overnight. It is a learned experience it is a learned trait and people like michael jordan some of these other people we're discussing like uh, steve jobs you know if you start doing stuff and you work out how you have a relationship with disappointment or even failure you get really good at finding ways around it and you see successful people perpetually you don't notice successful people going around walls or jumping over walls so they just do it organically inherently because they're so practiced at it that becomes part of their dna and that's what michael jordan's talking about there in that you know you've got to actually start doing it and have a cop a few on the chin and start failing a couple of times to work out how you can actually get the skills to move around you need some scar tissue and And this goes back to getting the game if you're not in the game you're not going to you're going to learn these things and you've got to be able to dust yourself off and move on so it's a really good quote okay number nine a bit different to um Michael Jordan, the uh, the scientist, Albert Einstein, and this is a classic quote, and I'm sure you've heard of it before. Uh, the definition of insanity is to do the same thing as everyone else and expect a different outcome. Mm. It, I'm sure he's talking about science there, but it you know, lends itself to any, any real experience in life. Yeah, any decision. Again, I guess it relates to the consensus, doesn't it? If you're about to do something as an investor, before you do it, ask yourself, am I doing this for the right reasons or am I doing it because it's what everyone else thinks I should do. Mm. If you're doing that, there's a better than average chance it's probably not what you should be doing because the world is not full of all these financially independent people. As Albert Einstein says, if you do what all those other people have done, the odds are you'll end up where they ended up. Now, that might not necessarily be terrible for you, but is it what you really want? You know, I take a lot out of that. If you're following the herd, you're doing what everyone else yeah. is doing. Yeah. And the thing is, a, a variation is quote also is if you keep doing the same thing yourself over and over again, expect a different outcome is the definition of an insanity, right? You know, and people do it all the time. Go, I'll keep doing it, and th- something might change. You know, I've made a conscious decision years ago to stop myself when I recognise there's a consensus swell of you know, let's do this in investment space. Mm. It doesn't mean I won't do it, but I make a conscious decision to stop and think, what is the opposite doing? And more often than not, when I go through and compare two options, the opposite direction looks better. 
we've got a challenge. It's the only way you can get ahead and sort of adapt your thinking or change your thinking is to uh, you know, go against the herd. So uh, point number 10 of our sage sayings, and, and this one a little bit older, so we're talking about Albert Einstein, and I imagine that quote is, where was Albert Einstein? So it's probably in the 40s or 50s he come out with that. Michael Jordan, these are got to be sort of 90s quotes. Jobs are going to be the 2000s. Warren Buffett, he's well known for his quotes. And go, go and um, Google Warren Buffett quotes and you get a whole bunch of other oh, stuff as well. Yeah, books on the stuff. There's so many of the things. And JFK, he's got a lot of famous sayings. And, you know, if you're sitting there watching one of those miserable shows like Married at First Sight and you want something more important to do, <laughs> <laughs> just Google Google some of this stuff. But uh, number 10, this is from 1931, Dr. Adrian Rogers. And he says, the government cannot give anything to anyone without first taking it away from someone else. You cannot multiply wealth by dividing it. Peace yeah. age. I saw this during the federal election campaign, and I'm sure whoever put it up there would have done it deliberately. Mm. But there were some policies during that campaign that was this. It was policies to let's take something from a group of people who already have it and give it to some others who are complaining and want it. Mm. And as this great, I don't know who Dr. Adrian Rogers is, but what a profound statement. You can not create wealth by dividing it. And for a government to give it to someone, they've got to take it from somewhere else. So I bring this back to right at the very start. Get off the sidelines, adjust your attitude, have a go. Don't sit around waiting for it to happen to you or expecting someone to give it to you. Get in the game. So sometimes you might need to give yourself a bit of a kick out the backside or find someone to do it for you. If you want to achieve anything really important, learn from all these successful people, whether they're property people, business people, sporting people. It's attitude. That's the common theme all through this. They have a go. You've got to have a go, and it's a great Australian trait, isn't it? Having it a go, giving it a go. It's what we've been well known for. And whether we're losing some of that in this modern age, it's not for me to – to give you my views on that, but there'll be some people that would say that is the case. So don't, this is about analysis, paralysis, what do you want to call it? You know, people get so caught up or swept up in too much information these days that it stops them from getting in the game and having to go. You're better off being in the game than out of the game. Absolutely. Simple, you know. You get splinters sitting on the sidelines, mate, don't yeah, there you? There you go. There's another quote for you, number 11. You get splinters <laughs> sitting on the sidelines. Simon Presley, 2019. <laughs> Good. I enjoyed it. Thanks. My what pleasure. are we going to do next time around? Got any ideas? How about we talk about some property market outlooks and uh, some economic forecasting and things like that? Your listeners, I think, seem to enjoy that sort of thing. They do seem to like it. And uh, and if there's anything you'd like us to cover, you're tuning into this and, uh, you know, I quite enjoy these list type stuff. It uh, makes for good articles and people will write in around it. And if you want to get in touch with us around any of these quotes or your views towards them, uh, you can email the team, editor at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. We're going to be doing some Q&A stuff as well, so I have to get you back for some question and answers. Simon, thank you. It's good. It's been, been a good year, mate. I don't know if we'll get you back in before the year is out. It's not far away. It's only weeks until Christmas now, which is, uh, which is quite scary. But um, some great sayings to reflect and think about when you're on the beach maybe. Do, do you surf up? It's, uh, it's, uh, Sunshine Coast good surf coast, isn't it? Up Noosa Way, right? I'm yeah. one of these guys. I like being next to water. I find it very relaxing, but I hate being in yeah, it. hate being in it. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I'd like to wish uh, all your listeners a – very Merry Christmas and a, a very productive and prosperous 2020. It's fair, fair to say the last four or five years in Australian real estate has been littered with more challenges than anything else, but mm. I certainly think we're well and truly over that hump. So when you are relaxing over your Christmas break, it is goal-setting season. Set your goals and move forward next year. Give us a headline for 2020. What's going to be? The start of the best decade Australian real estate has seen since the year 2001-2, directly after the Sydney Olympics. Big call. All right. There we have it. Make sure you're tuning in to Smart Property Investment Podcast next year because uh, we're going to be covering all this stuff off. And uh, Simon, thanks again for your support this year. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for coming down. Each time Simon's on the podcast, he does come down from the sunny land of Brisbane. So uh, it's good to get him down here and, and sharing his insights and knowledge uh, around property investment. And I must admit, if that is the case for this upcoming decade, it's time to make hay and get in the game if you want to be successful and, and, and create wealth well, property. Well, before we buy the asset, we've mm. got to buy the debt. Yeah. And there is not a person alive – who can buy debt cheaper than what you can buy it now, and it looks like it's going to remain that way for a long period of time. So your profit and loss statement, the expenses column, is lower now than what it will ever be. Mm. You're still going to get good research to get the right asset, 
but your household budget is uh, largely taking care of itself for quite some time. So, so, get, get so the goal should be to create as much equity as you can in, in a low debt environment. Yep. Simple. That's the secret of the property, right? Yep. And there's lots of markets out there that haven't had much growth at all for a good part of the last decade. They mm. are ripe for the picking. Well, maybe we can get into them in 2010. And any questions at all, remember to edit to at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Thanks again, Simon. Appreciate you coming My down. Pleasure. Remember to check out smartpropertyinvestment.com.au, social media, Smart Property HQ. Follow us on all the different platforms if you want to keep connected with what's going on. Social traffic is surging. Also, our podcast traffic and downloads. We had our biggest month ever in October. So I do appreciate you all tuning in and listening to me uh nag on on this on the airwaves it's a real privilege for me to be spending this time with you every single week doing whatever you're doing and from what i understand people are listening to this in cars and at the gym or going on a walk with their dogs or you know they sometimes sit there with with their partner over a glass of wine and listen to what we're talking about so it's a real privilege coming into your bedrooms lounge rooms wherever you listen to this sort of stuff hope you enjoy it uh we'll be keeping at it right through the christmas period and thanks again for tuning in we'll be back again next time until then bye bye the information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.